What is the most difficult campaign I've had to play in this? Have a guess. Can you please counterattack? Or do something useful. Well, actually, I'm pretty happy just sitting here, replenishing my supplies, replenishing my forces. Fine. The thing that I really liked about Attila is they were not afraid to break the rules established in previous uh, Total Wars. It's the first one where cities are raisable. It's the first one where they had the horde mechanics, where armies could function as cities, depending on your faction. It was the... It wasn't the first one that had uh, amphibious attacks, but it was the first one where I think they really got it right. Like, the amphibious attacks in uh, Attila are great. I really like those. Playing as the uh, Viking uh, predecessors, really, really good. Um, and it's it's one game which does something extremely rare in strategy games. It can model a large empire's downfall accurately, because usually if you start out as the biggest empire, you usually just snowball even further and become even bigger. Not in this. Not if you play as Western Rome. It really does model the uh, downfall of Western Rome so well. Uh, that, that, for me, is like the outstanding thing. Like, that is not easy to do. As a game designer, I can say... Quite happily, that is very, very difficult to do. Icings are dead. East Anglia have done their job. Somebody's leveled up. This is... Oh, it's the general. Level you up. Right, is this counter-attack seriously never coming? Because I'm not going to be able to build anything for quite a long time because my income is terrible. Well, Gwynedd is definitely a slower paced game. <laughs> Adelwi is gone. So it's going to be their 11 against their 14. I'm going to gamble on the fact that their 11 will win because they're actually full strength. They are not. Then you're going to counterattack and attack Lan Pladan, Padan, at which point I turn around and go, Aha! Mine now. And it's winter. So, we'll see if my estimation is correct. Or are they just going to sit on land, are we? Because I'm pretty sure they can reach Padan this turn. Was correct. And they've started to move, but they're not going to get there in time. Although they are going to take the gold city. But again, I can just sit and land pad on, let these guys counterattack again, take the gold city, and then I counterattack into there. So slow and steady wins the race. Nordman have arrived. Finnegal have arrived. We will serve you well. Ready to fight. Back to your lines. Strike them down. Don't waver. So I have archer superiority. Though they do have javelins. I have quality ah. superiority as well. They have no swordsmen. Well, they do have Welsh armored axemen though. And then they have cavalry superiority because I'm not counting the general. You know what? I'm going to circle you because next turn you start taking uh, attrition. I have the supplies to do this. Might as well. 
And then I'm the defender, so they have to attack me. Mercia, why do you keep going into my lands with very large armies? This is not at all worrying. Oh, they did not... They did not attack out. That's interesting, because they're going to start taking attrition. It's either this turn or next turn. I'm perfectly content to just sit here and siege them. That's one thing I've established. I am not in a hurry. My rank has increased. Um, Tudwal. Ah, my governor. Oh, good, because that means I'm going to earn more money. Now, the really nice thing about uh, Gwynedd is the fact that your followers have double their effectiveness. Like, that's insane. So, leveling up generals is really important. Wow, that's a lot of trade. Flipping hell! <laughs> yeah, so they've just taken Landowi back again. I'm going to continue sieging you down. Oh, can you imagine it? Welsh followers with non-cavalry generals? Guys who could actually reach level 2? That would be incredible. That might be why they've given them that bonus. They're like, ah, they'll never survive that long enough for uh, followers to really matter. It's fine. Okay, now they sallied out. But again, I'm the defender. Oh, and I get the village on my side, apparently. Alright. I will absolutely exploit that fact. As <laughs> silly as it is. This is one thing they really ought to fix in a patch. There's no way I should be in the village. And they're just going to come straight at me, so this is going to be the most important choke point. This is going to be quite important, and this is going to be the back entrance. Alright. So, the guys at the front entrance will be my swords units. Yeah, why don't we do something like this? Swordsmen! So we have the extra frontage here. Unfortunately, that does not give me any particularly good archery positions. Though I could hide archers up here, then move to flank. And possibly even hide archers in here, then move up to flank. Right, we definitely want spearmen here. We may even want the spearmen in this bit. So I'm going to put these two spearmen here. We'll position you like this initially, and then we'll just push you forwards. And I think I am going to try and go for the flank here. So we'll stick those archers there. And those guys. And the cavalry. All hidden in the woods. That's the way. Then I'm going to position my general here. Where he will give his combat bonus out. I really need to get his zeal up. Because then that aura What's is bigger and I can pull him back more. So he's not into archer range. Maybe instead of quartermaster to take champion to increase the size of the bodyguard. Size of the bodyguard won't matter. Like as soon as they get bogged down in battle the, uh, the unit's just dead. They just die far too quickly. The thing that might change it, like I said, is the zeal. Um, so I can just keep him out of range of bad guys or just hide him away somewhere. So if I increase his command, then that increases the morale of everyone on the field. It doesn't matter where he is. In fact, that probably is the better, best option. All right. I'm fairly happy with this formation. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I may want to do. 
probably tell you guys not to fire. Oh, you position. Oh. Okay. Well, in that case, that changes things. Let's position you right there. Maybe even here. No, because you're going to get shot in the back from anyone that's back there. No, we are going to put you here. That is going to mean that enemies will have frontage on you. Because they can attack from this side as well. Um, you'll just have to suck it up. I'm going to leave the cavalry there. And then archers. Back off into here. Double time, men! And the lot of them! And again, archers are going to be my flanking unit. I would, guess, I would guess the upgraded general has heavier armor. Probably, but it's still going to get tied down and sh torn to pieces. Noble them. I mean, that's one of the really nice things about the uh, infantry generals, is they tend to be really heavily armored. You guys. Haste along. Our hidden units have been discovered. Horsemen, kick your mounts. See what we can do about Spearman. separating them. That's the way. Horsemen, riders up the pace. Trash them. Horsemen. Okay, so they did not attack that side at all. Some of their horsemen are coming around the side. I was a little bit concerned they would try and join in this skirmish, but they haven't. Which is great. Oh shit. Let's out of charge formation. Alright, their archers are coming around this side, which is actually fine. Oh! Oh, you guys are in range of this! Oh, hello! Wasn't expecting that. That's Boone. And they're just sending their troops in the front. Uh, okay. 49 against 42. I mean, what I could do is get my general involved over there. Try and save my cavalry. Okay, well, how's the morale? Alright. Against 12. Fire! Straight into their sights. Amazing. Shoot that. Here come the cavalry. Our general is under attack! He will be fine. These cavalry don't seem to have realized what was happening. You're at 18. You're actually improving in morale. And you guys are just absorbing fire. Which I'm fine with. What's your command? You guys are just being shot back by them who are apparently not dead yet. Just see how flimsy they are. Half their health. Oh, ha! Huh. General got here just in time, apparently. Okay. Your archers are breaking. The other cavalry have woken up to the danger of my general, but my archers have woken up to the danger of their cavalry. And are doing to their cavalry what their archers tried to do to mine. Don't break now. 
The men have been routed. They are leaving the field. I think we got their attention. Archers! Loose! Steady, boys. They charge me, men. Numbers are now equal. Go ahead and shoot at them. Don't hold back. Meanwhile, these guys are just holding their position like absolute Levy bosses. Man. I think I am going to start you guys moving forwards, though. Levy man. It is a three. Haste along. That's the way. Show us the ball. Double time, man! Guard the flanks! Quick march it is! They're firing Strike at hard. us! Come on, guys. Kill them. That's better yet. We'll use the Arc Cavalry against you. And shoot into your backs. Which will free up my Valley Spears to flank around this side. I'm hoping the flank attack breaks these levees quickly. So it looks like you're actually taking the worst of it. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Our men run from the enemy! This is shameful! Before our might, the falls flat the spearmen. Pound the ground. The swordsmen are just putting up a huge fight. They're being great. And on. Up the pace. We are the company. Ready and willing. All right, General. Let's bring you back over here, just to make sure that their morale doesn't break. Because I recognise that you guys have been here for a while. You especially are starting to take some hits. I'm amazed that these guys are still standing. Those are archers. Let's go kill those archers. Break formations, charge in. That's the way. Attacks. You actually hit. Yes, you are. Glorious. It's a rout. Our warriors flee the battle. Who's here? What's your command? Them. Let's do the morale buff. Here we go. Watch for the missiles. This is where it all goes wrong for them. Oh, 
Hey Johnny Five. No, today's going a bit better than yesterday. I mean, the king's died once already today, but I've got a new plan. It's a very cunning plan. See, they flee before our might. Guard the flanks. Namely, don't have the general, don't have the king as a general. Just make him a nobody. If he's not in the battle, he can't be killed. The battle is turning in our favor. That's the way. Oh, no run away! Charges. Run away! Don't die now, please! Alright, we're fine. The enemy general is dead! That's what I wanted to see! There we go. Oh wait, this was a siege. Boom! <laughs> Maybe this will do for another king. Yeah, Johnny, thank you. <laughs> that will definitely do for a new king. Or, you know, just putting the king in permanent retirement. That will pay for his retirement home, there you go. You can retire at the tender age of, what is it, 23 I think he is? He's, he's pretty young. At least he's not a dead king. That That's the main thing. So I lost 500, they lost 1,000. This went a whole lot better. This, this was good. And also I killed their king. I will definitely be taking that replenishment. Oh, I didn't actually take the settlement. Oh, I'll, I'll need to push the advantage next turn, I guess. Had it planned already. Well, thank you. I do appreciate your support. Thank you. Really. Oh, now I can occupy it. Cool. Mine now. Now I just need them to raise another army to go and attack Landewi. Because I want it because it's a gold mine. I mean, I'm, I'd be perfectly happy for you guys to take Dinafuer. I want Abateifel and these two. My warriors but for the moment, I'm perfectly water. happy to just sit here and replenish. Why am I losing food? Doesn't use food, does it? Nope. Every man will do his duty. Why am I losing food? Raiding. You're raiding my territory, you idiots. Hopefully they'll stop next turn. Okay, um, yeah, that was, that went perfectly. We will serve you well. Experience is going up. My archers are getting really quite strong already. Boom. You know what I should do? I should save the game. Even if this is one of the slowest progressing games yet. I mean, this is already, what, turn 15 or something? I've taken one province. But we've grown. It's all good. I mean, with this army, I could go and siege their capital of this province and take that. But I really want to be able to take the thing. Minus one command, plus three armor for the commander's unit, plus five melee skill for the commander's unit. For Yorveth? Yes, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Lose a bit of command, but who cares? I'll get some more. You are going for the capital. That's annoying. You, however, are raising a new army, which I'm hoping you use to just go and take Landoi while they're trying to siege down Abba, Abba, that place. For the glory of the Cymry. And I'm producing food again, so that's no longer a problem. We are, we are garrisoned. Yes, we are garrisoned. 
And we have a chance of an uprising here, but it's fine. I have a garrison. Right, anything I can build. No. Well, the first thing I would need to build would be this. 1,600. Uh, not next turn. That's actually 1,700. Turn after. Shock to the shield maiden lowers command. Uh, well, she... It's probably just because they needed a negative, because she buffs everything else. Just the uh, melee chance and the armor bonus is pretty potent. It's basically trading command skill for combat skill. Yes, take it. Thank you. Powers is attacking Gwent as well. Alright. No, don't. <gasps> Are you sieging them or did you just sack them? I think he just sacked them. Which is fine, because this means I can sweep in and take it. And it's a gold mine. I want that city. I will repair the damage of your sacking. I am okay with this. People are dying left, right, and center. warriors will not falter. Yoink! As commanded. Without question. Yep, they did sack it. I will spend the 1,200 to repair that building. It's fine. Right, so Powies is now at war with Gwen. Oh, that's only actually one city? Oh, okay. That's less bad than I thought it was. The Romans love the mines of Wales. I can see why. I can certainly see why. The English loved the uh, mines of Wales too. You get repaired in one turn. Fine. And then I just need to take Abitifel, and I'll actually be fairly happy with this. I mean, we'll definitely need to build the church line here to offset the um, public order issues that we're going to have. Currently got the Ancient Empires mod slowly downloading, which I watch and play. Oh, while you watch and playing Mio, which isn't crashing. Oh, you got it working without the crashes. Have they released an update or something then? Because that's still on my list of games I want to play. It's, it's actually right at the top of my list. We will share the honor and glory. Powies wants me to join their war. <laughs> You've gone to war with Wessex. Nah, I'm good. Thanks. You're offering me 200 that to commit suicide. No thanks. I'm fine. Very kind of you. But really, there's no reason. I need your army to go and siege that, while this army goes and sieges that. Then they'll stop building units. They have an army there. Does Dewent at war with them? Every man will do his duty. Victory awaits! My siege. Don't waver. No, Dewent is not at war with them. That's a moderate garrison, but it's not an amazing one. But well, the two swordsmen counter my swordsmen. My archers counter their archers actually fairly heavily. They have walls for the defensive bonus. That's actually very equal. I don't have an amazing commander to offset, although they don't have a governor Strike here. Them down. That seems unlikely. And now we're making some serious cash. To war with Dewey. It's just them. Powies definitely seems to have a bit of a uh, death wish. Going to war with Wessex already? Really? Really? 
Really? It's going to be interesting going up against Wessex with these armies. Oh, they just took care of Midden. They are at war with Dewent. And it looks like that Dewent army is going to be assisting me. Even the Paradox devs are impressed with the performance of Miel's team. Miel's team are very cool. And I've met them in uh, at ParadoxCon. Um, they're really cool. I really like the Paradox devs. I like the Paradox devs, but I really like the Miel devs. And actually, the head guy of Miel and Taxes, Gigal, I met him without even realizing who he was. We were just hanging out. This was the first time I went to a Paradox thing two years ago. Yeah, it was 2016. A uh, really, really nice guy. And then I met the rest of the team through him. We still have a few beers every time we see each other. And now I know that he's actually the lead of Mio. It's, I always feel bad. I'm like, I haven't really played much of your mod yet. Okay, we now hugely outnumber them. Manually fight this battle. This is going to be a big battle, but we are being supported. Yeah, it was the population system that I didn't really like previously, and I just couldn't get into it. Uh, but the new one looks a lot better. And it looks suspiciously like Imperator Rome lifted the Mio and Taxes population system and put it in Imperator. And apparently the Mio and Taxes team had a like private viewing of Imperator uh, with Johan. So I think he was kind of trying to show that aspect off to them. Saying, hey, you had some really good ideas. We've implemented those ideas in our next game. 